Hey, what's up, DIYers? Mike Bors with the Mike Bors channel. Hey, thanks for watching. We're talking reverse osmosis systems today. In the event that water is not flowing out your faucet, it might be an issue with your internal auto shutoff valve. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Let's get started. All right, DIYers, here it is, the RO system. And this is the entire filter case removed from underneath the sink. All of the filters have been removed. And on the back, you've got all the water line connections and I have removed the six quarter inch screws. And we are going to pop this auto shutoff valve kit off, set it down here. And I wanna show you something. You've got two circular cutouts and two rubber O-rings, one in each insert. The upper insert has what's called your check valve, and that is a very important part. However, I wanna direct your attention to the inner diaphragm of your auto shutoff valve kit. And this portion right here, Here's the back of it again that is always visible when everything's set up and secured. And take note of that rectangle cutout. And we are going to carefully begin taking the diaphragm apart. And not sure if you can see it, but you can barely make out a little indent on that diaphragm that is from that cutout. So when it comes time to put everything back together, it may be helpful knowing where that little indent is. So I'm going to carefully use a little pick tool. Again, this is a diaphragm. You do not want to damage it and i will pick that up here's the back of it nothing special from here you can use that same pick tool and pick up the inner part of the diaphragm housing and it may also be just as easy take note maybe take a few photos of how it's going in i'll show you how to put it back in but i'm going to tip it upside down and it should just fall right out and i will set these aside over here and i'll shift that aside and I'll talk about that flow restrictor here shortly. However, here is the internal diaphragm housing. You'll notice a little cutout right there. And on top, you'll see a hole. And it should not be obstructed. Clean out any and all debris clogging that hole. If all looks good, here's the inner diaphragm portion. And they feel like rubber. And that basically rests inside here. You can see the kind of discolored stain on it. And that is basically from this part right here. And this part goes right there. This part feeds right inside there. And then you've got this outer diaphragm that fits right in place. And this works literally as a diaphragm works and as designed through the pressures within your system. Now that we have this entire portion removed, again, the auto shutoff valve kit with the diaphragm, just kind of take a pick tool, make sure that everything is clear looks good grab a flashlight go ahead and inspect all of your water push fittings these fittings are where the water lines go into so you want to make sure they are clean and clear if they are clogged water will not pass through and your system will not work as designed so once you got everything taken apart cleaned out if there's any grime in here maybe way down in that little groove right there clean it out we will put everything back together now i will grab the inner diaphragm and if it's very slimy or it's got grime or any other debris on it, wipe it clean. And I will insert that there. As shown here, I will now grab the plastic housing and that little hole basically goes right in. And then you've got this little tab right here and clean it if it's dirty. That will go inside here. Correction, it needs to be down per the instructions. And the outer diaphragm portion. Again, see a little indent basically from the rectangle portion of the hard cover. We will insert that. And it should have a little bit of diaphragm play. See that? That's how it's supposed to work. Make sure your O-rings are properly seated. Your internal check valve looks good. As far as that, you should just be able to Go inside your check valve in the center portion and it should push in and out or up and down and that works under water pressure. We will carefully re-secure this, apply a little bit of pressure to properly seat those rubber o-rings. We will grab these six quarter inch screws and secure it. And be careful as you screw these quarter inch screws into the thread. It's plastic thread. You do not want to strip it. So align it properly. They should go in very smoothly and do not over tighten it. Again, plastic thread you could damage it very quickly at this point all six quarter inch screws are secured again do not over tighten it now i want to talk about this flow restrictor you've got a little orange insert here and you can pop this out and on the inner portion of that orange insert is a very tiny hole and in the event that that hole gets clogged over the months and years that you are using this system 
it will shut down basically everything about the system. It will not allow any water to flow through. And this goes in the red one, and it's a push fitting. Again, you push that red insert down, and simultaneously as you push that down, you pull this flow restrictor out. And replacement flow restrictors are less than eight bucks. In most cases, maybe five. So again, verify your insert is clean and clear. If it's dirty, clean it out, and then push it back in. Now what we'll do is install the case back underneath the sink and re-secure all the water lines. Down below underneath the sink, and I've got the filter case, and here's the water lines. You've got the red one and blue one. The red one goes into the flow restrictor, the blue one down here, and then you've got a yellow one, which feeds all the way basically to your tank, and that is that one right there, and then you've got the green one, and that feeds basically all the way to this green portion right there at your main water shutoff valve. And what we will do for your convenience, not sure if it will be helpful or you will even be interested in it, we will post a link down below in the comment section as well as description section on how to replace the flow restrictor, as well as additional helpful videos that hopefully can get your RO system back up and running properly. However, again, from here, we are going to re-secure the water lines. At this point, all water lines are secured. All three filters shifted back in place and secured. The post filter, membrane, and pre-filter, you want to do them in that order. Now what we'll do is turn the water on counterclockwise. Going back up top, what we're doing now is just patiently waiting for the water to come out. And once it comes out, we're going to close that faucet, allow two to three hours to pass, allow the system to pressurize, and we will check for leaks at all the fittings. And hopefully we'll be back up and running. Appreciate you watching. From here, do us a favor, blow the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.